Hi everyone, my name is Greg Brewer, and I'm here to talk to you about our glorious faction, Big Wah. I'm an avid destruction player with 150 underneath my belt down here in southern sunny California in the United States with the faction. I've been playing destruction since a couple months before 3.0 actually dropped. So I've been playing Age of Sigmar for about over two years now, and I have several other 4.1s under my belt as well. It's my name. And I travel as much as I can to get out to other GTs, not just on the West Coast, but in the East Coast and the center of the state as uh, the country as well. And I'll actually be in Nova in a couple weeks as well. So, hey, I just want to basically talk to everyone about one of my favorite factions. Moss has graciously accepted me onto his channel to talk to you guys about the faction and how to win with it. I personally love orcs, even though the rules rules wise they might not be the strongest but they are the best in my heart as orcs are the <laughs> bestest and everyone should realize this um big Wah allows me to play with all of them with how i want to play them they give me gives me the most like tactical usage that i can get as many tools in, to accommodate or go tackle any type of problem that i see in the game and having a toolbox army is personally my favorite though Orcs in general is just my favorite. So really, I just want to talk to anybody and anybody who'd listen about, hey, this is one of the greatest factions that I love with some of the glorious models that I love. And this is the platform that I could think I can help other people improve who might have questions about like, hey, how do I win with this faction? What things I should take, what I should not, just to be as competitive with it, even in a format that might not say that this is the best for orcs but I want to prove that them wrong and prove that we can be in the upper echelons to fight against other people with the stronger armies. And yeah, it's just a wonderful faction, wonderful toys. And it just makes me happy to play with the models. So thank you so much, Moss, for having me on the channel. Hey, my pleasure. People keep saying, and it's funny, like when people let me use their artwork or agree to come on interviews with me, People always come and they thank me, and that blows my mind, right? It blows my mind because everyone is, in, it, from my perspective, everyone is doing me a favor. So thank you for agreeing to come and uh, and talk with me this afternoon. I appreciate it. Uh, you you bring up a couple interesting things that make me want to ask you some questions right off the rip. You say that Big Wah is a toolbox army, right? And I think that that's something that is true. That's always been true, right? because you have this huge list of models and uh, units that you can draw from, it really does let you counter what you see in your local meta or in like the bigger meta in general. So what kind of counter meta, what kind of lists, what kind of impressions do you have for this season? Like, what are you, what are you feeling this season? Yeah. So just because you have access to so many different models, because you have, we are essentially three factions in one book. Yep. We're allowed to like pull and pick and choose the things that are just best for our situation. So that's what I mean when I say toolbox. And it, it's also like in some game terms where you can say soup, where you're just taking ingredients from all different locations and just trying to make your best soup for yourself. Yep. So that's where it's all, so great for big wa where you can take the models that you want and try to fit it best for your current situation what i would say like what you're looking for for this season and uh just how to best perform it's obviously some of it is the wizards when we get into like the the androian i think it's how it's pronounced uh whatever the locusts yeah um the locust mechanics so wizards help out a lot when you can get the primal dice for casting and unbinding where orcs were not that great at casting in general that's also why big Wah is great because it actually helps with that but if we're able to take that formation our casting does get better when we have more primal dice the other things we want to consider is having more things that move fast because these battle tactics in this ghb are much much harder compared to the previous editions of 3.0 so far which is what I like. It makes the game more interesting, but we now are able or have to take pieces into our soup lists that allow us to get these battle tactics when we can't do our orc ones. So, for instance, the having more models outside of your territory than in and having dudes on the board edges. So we want to look at having, for instance, 
some fast units within our armies so we can have units to complete those battle tactics on the board edge, whether that's via teleport from our casters or from cavalry like pigs or some allies. So casters, mobility, any any other kind of like general ideas for this GHP? Yeah, so some other things that we can look into if we're looking at the state of the meta and just like talking about that in general. Yes. Uh, looking at like some horde clears. So we'll see when we get to some of my lists that uh, brutes are very good at clearing hordes. So brutes for strict damage when you hit them with... Uh, Violent Fury from our War Chanters, considering we're playing Big Wah, once we get into talking about the uh, how we're building lists, uh, we always need a War Chanter, so we might as well throw it on something that's going to really work for you. War so Brutes putting a bunch of damage and attacks into horde, the Horde meta, which is like Soul Blight Grave Lords, some Gloom Spike gets, and... Some other some other people are looking to like dump a lot of wounds. Like even Feck up there is really good, and then like summoning Seraphon. Yeah. So we want to be able to have enough damage to actually clear through these things. So that's something you need to be aware of when building lists. Right. So like quick units, casters, and brutes, especially if you have a lot of um, yeah. If that like it seems to me like if there's a lot of horde meta that that seems like a really smart play, for sure. Yeah, especially when they say that you can't contest objectives if you at least cost, if you have one yeah. wound. So that helps out a lot. Awesome. So, like, um, so any any other kind of, like, thoughts for the season? Like, is are there any generals that you find are particularly useful this season? Any enhancements that you're, that you're finding particularly good this season? Yeah, so we can go into some, some of the leaders that you're looking at. Like, all, all, everyone probably knows, like, Gobsbrack is one of our best options right now it, this season. He's been getting so many point drops along with mostly yep. KB because of <laughs> the GHP and like previous GHPs. So now they're finally getting some love, and that's a good thing. Um, Gobsbrack with his 3d6 once per game unbind is really good when you have the Locust Battalion. So you can, because it was not changed to unmodified. So even with the 3d6, even with Primal Dice, that's considered modified for his ability of dealing damage to wizards. So he's just great to just scare any of your opponents that are looking to actually do some casting. And he's a re really fast model as well. And we all know if we're playing the faction, the Crewboy spell lore is actually solid. Super solid. And since, since he knows all of those, so you have the slew of answers to many things you can get the minus one oh, sorry you yeah you can get the minus one attack within 24 inches for everything within six of that point yep. which is fantastic considering like obr is always next to each other and they're a very problematic army just for everybody in general that's a good one if as long as they're not hitting null myriad then you cry but that's everybody right yeah and you can't run and that, to me, that's yes. that's also very... Like, both parts of that spell are, are quite strong. They're amazing. There's the one, if you want to get him up close enough, which you might eventually, but you will just can turn off ward saves for something that's really a pain in your butt. Yep. Another cool combo is with um, Sneaky Miasma. If there's something you want a nasty hex to shut the ward off, right? You can, yep. you can move 14 forward you know assuming you get your spells off right nasty hex and then move back right you can ro yeah, you can move back great. 14 and you can run because you're not charging right so it's quite it's quite powerful and flying over terrain like he's so versatile and and like you said before he can move right and that's that's important this ghb being able to move around quickly so he's yeah, yeah he's fantastic like, unfortunately Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm so ha I'm just super happy about Gobsmack. Like I've had, I've wanted to play him for so long, and this season it's like, oh my, oh my goodness, finally, finally, yeah. he'll he'll see I the had table. Two vultures right? for so long. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> couldn't do anything really. Right, and it's like, and another thing about Gobsmack too is that he's a monster, right? He's a monster. Oh, yeah. Like he and just that fact alone, like I made this comment, I think with Aaron, but. Being able to swoop in and smash a ziggurat or smash a loon shrine or, you know, like that has a lot of value. Gameplay. Gameplay. Right? Yeah. 
So I'm a big fan of that for sure. And then the last thing that I would say, at least for him specifically, is minus one charge for your opponent's entire army board wide. Really good. Yep. There's lots of good options. I've um yeah, I mean there's so many good there's so many good cruel boy spells that like I've I've thought of in Big Wa about bringing um Swamp Kala. You ever bring a Swamp Kala in Big Wa? I've done it a couple times. Um when we can have when I can fit bull boys in, kind of some other things with the GHB makes it hard for me to want to consider bringing shooting is with the change with the lookout, sir. Yeah, for sure. So I can't really pick off key pieces. Mainly what I brought bull boys in previously for was if I could snipe a hero, even with minus one to hit, they were on twos if they didn't move. Um, so they were, they were good for that. And then sometimes for screens. Yep. So I don't bring them as often. Most of my, because of how the wall points work and what it pushes you towards, I don't have a lot of points available for a lot of crew boys, just units. No, it's more like so, hard boys and brutes, right? It's unfortunate when yeah. you have to bring a war chanter, you have to bring at least a bone splitters wizard, but there's no benefit for bringing anything for crew boys, which is kind of sad. Yeah. For your, at least your wall points. For at least your wall points, that's true. Well, I heard, um, going off on a little bit of a tangent here, I've heard, you know, people dis discussing in rumors that the next orc book is probably going to be two books, Cruel Boys and Iron Jaws, with Bone Splitters um, d disappearing. What are your, yeah, what, what do you I, think? What's your prediction for that? I'm also agreeing with that, because unfortunately, if, since the book came out, most of the Bone Splitters War Scrolls are very bare they're very blank yeah and you'll see when i when we discuss my lists almost no bone splitters are in it besides the one war scroll i think is even interesting in that book which is the war god prophet yep um but most of their war scrolls are just like oh we just get plus one to wound on a charge or plus yeah. one attack and it's it's so bare bones it's not good and they haven't been getting like any bonuses since like the big stabbers were a big problem in the meta for a bit and that's where they got hit with a little bit of the nerf bat nerf bat and then they got like one change to one of their sub factions and then nothing else while crew boys is still getting points drops and like change to the the uh yeah there's sneaky tactics so i i really do believe unfortunately they're probably going to be squatted for me the two big hints from gw are no new battle tactic yes right it's like that sucks and, Iron and cruel boys got it yeah like, oh god why it's like if you have a you know a bone splitters unit has to x y right that's a huge hint and the second one was the latest meta watch where they weren't even included on the list right in the yeah. in the article it said like oh you know they, there haven't been enough competitive games and in my head, I think BS, right? BS, you're just trying, like there probably haven't been a ton of games, but I feel like you're trying to soften a, a blow that's incoming, right? If you sort of let everyone know passively that their army is going to be put on the shelf for good in Age of Sigmar, people can come to terms with it. Like it's better that it's a, it's a like, yeah, I kind of knew the bone splitters were gone and oh yeah, like yeah. it's better for players to feel that way than for them to feel like, what i just bought five hundred dollars with a bone splitter models right like it's better that people see it coming you know what i mean so very much agree womp, they, womp. yeah it's too bad because i hope wargog stays right i hope wargog's around still i love the model i, I love, love wargog war scroll yeah it's great i hope he's uh i hope he's a cruel boy right i hope yeah, they rebrand him that would be good. I would hope for some sort of rebranding for him. But there are so many, like, diehard Bone Splitters players, so, like, I would feel really bad that they no longer get their get their to get to play with their toys, you know? Yeah, for sure. But un unfortunately, it's looking like with their War Scrolls, they're, they don't really have a place in at least Big Wah, besides that one rule for needing a Bone Splitters wizard. And it's looking like they're not having much of a place in gw in general yes i also what do you think about the the two books iron jaws and cruel boys gork and mark do you think that we'll get a uh, split i don't i don't think that we're gonna i don't think we're gonna split off again i think it will probably still stick with orc war clans and we'll be together on 
because both both of them just don't have that many like models to like say to just be one faction for me and like i say that when i know fac only has like less than 10 models right but like i would like them together to so we can continue doing and keeping big wa and i yes. think that's more likely to happen i i would be sad to lose big wa as an army and i would be sad to lose big wa as the type of army that it is right like a, like a reactive meta busting play with all your models kind of army i would also be very sad if that was the case i would be sad to yeah, lose big wa very much agreed yep it's At like it's for... just great sorry second well it gives you a reason that like so i started the game playing cruel boys and then when mm -hmm. i learned that big wall was a thing i was like hot damn let me go buy a start collecting box of iron jaws cool now i have some iron jaws let me get a few more iron jaws let me pr let me 3d print or proxy you know 16 pigs and get a mega boss on my you know what i mean it's like i can play three different armies with two different armies worth of models right and i and i, and I like that i like being able to like change up what i'm playing at the table and always play orcs right you, you know what i'm yeah, saying very much love all the models i would love to keep putting them all together yeah exactly so i'd be sad to lose big wall but i could see two books with a with a big wall section in each one but i mean i could see like a, this is an iron jaws big wall and this is a cruel boys big wall and they have different rules i don't know i i, I just hope they keep big wall anyway tangent aside <laughs> So, um, um, so yeah, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I wanted to go back to like the <laughs> models that you should consider in Big Wall, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Keep keeping looking for pigs to, uh, late. So when I say pigs from now on, I do mean Gorgruntas, unfortunately. Um, looking for pigs so you can have some mobility. Considering bringing in a Merc Knob, even though we're very, we are very hero heavy and we're kind of hard pressed for slots having a five up ignore spells on the board is still very good and could, can be considered well i thought i thought um Mergnub only hit cruel boys units oh is it i, I think, thought it was i thought it was everything i I'm, could be wrong it's I'm been a while since up, i looked at it pulling it up right now one sec but i remember having that same thought being like oh like um uh, you were over it um oh yeah because you can see what i'm doing sorry i'm trying to yes, talk and right think there. and click uh, yeah, it's right here. Uh, uh, cruel boys or so your cruel boy, your cruel boys primer then. That's good there. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, not in big one. Never mind. Because I think otherwise, like yeah, I mean, and I think that if uh, Merc Knob could hit orcs, I think he would be better in big wa than he is in cruel boys, right? Because cruel boys have that twelve inch yeah. invisibility deal, right? So a lot of those, like I don't think that a lot of people are actually playing Merc Knob in cruel boys for that reason. We already have this layer of protection and because right. same thing in cruel boys our hero slots are so valuable that it's even for 70 points it's like we're still not playing as merc knob needs to have the word he needs to have the leader word removed he needs to be changed to like unique or single or something or like you know what right. i mean like he needs to be changed so that he's not a, a hero he just needs to be other or something but and then he would see a lot more play for 70 points for sure anyway yeah i agree um some other units to consider, at least for allies. Stabas, great, fantastic ally to be just a big screen. My yeah. five O included like Scragrot and a unit of Stabas just to. Scragrot's a great caster. He did go up even a tad more in points, but still very worth it just for the CP usage. And he's a plus one caster with a very good War Scroll spell. If you wanted to bring some endless spells, he's a good endless spell user. Yep. Um. And then Rip of Snarl Fangs is one of my personal favorites for other things to bring. They're just a 110-point endless spell, essentially. They are a small unit, very fast, can just go and snipe something. They got buffed, so they got 11 attacks, all the are threes and threes, two damage, essentially. Yeah, if, I've if heard this from one, multiple people. Yeah. If they do one damage, then it's twos and twos. They will kill small screens by themselves, and they don't even have to... They don't even have to charge. They got a six-inch pile in. They can run eighteen and then pile in and just kill something. They yeah, a beautiful ten-point unit. So yeah, now to thinking and talking about allies, right? The stat. It seems to me like I mean, we can only bring in the gloom spike gets, right? But it seems yeah. to me that the units that we are bringing in from gloom spike gets are all there for their sheer, sheer utility, 
right? The snarl fangs are, like you said, they're quick. They have a pile in. Are they the ones that get the um, the the redeploy, reroll? No, they. That's the regular snarl fang riders. Right. Uh, they get the additional redeploy or like the, I think it's a reroll. I yeah. Don't look at them as much, but they because they, they don't do as dam as much damage as just the rip of snarl fangs unit and they're and they're more expensive than it right so but i've heard i, ha I have heard people uh you know using them i've seen people with um and like stabas right it's that nine inch uh contest objectives right like that can be really strong uh what do you think of um i saw in a list the other day somebody was running the spore f the spore fanatics have you looked into um, them at all or thought about them and this was a player that placed like four one and and also played on team Poland at Worlds. So, I mean, this isn't just like some random, you know, dude at his local hobby shop or whatever. Have you thought about those at all? I'm, I'm just curious. So, I've played them a bunch in regular Gloom Spike Gits. I don't think their plus two attack works on just everything in Destruction. I'd have to double check, but I don't think they're there for that. They would be there for blocking line of sight and probably their pregame move. Um,. Their pregame move would be good, especially if you hit Soul Blight, that they could uh, pregame move, and if your Soul Blight opponent decides to take first, they're not able to fully deploy all the zombie spam, skeleton, whatever, from Grave, and just keep you off points for the whole game. So I can see it there, especially if yeah. it's that kind of meta. Maybe it's a but I don't choice for that. Much right? of a reason to bring them other than that. Yeah. I have a feeling that like you're you're on the right track here. That it was targeted towards a specific player or a specific meta at that event that was predicted right it's like well i'm bringing this tech right this tech to beat these particular armies that i have trouble with i have a feeling that's what it is but i'll find out later because i'm talking to him in a week or so so uh, well, I, I, I would love to hear their thoughts on it as, as i'm not completely sure what they'd be there for even blocking like heroes with their special line of sight blocking thing yeah doesn't really matter much when shooting got like hit with the nerf bat with lookouts or for your, at least your heroes you know what i mean yeah i have a feeling he's going to be like oh this is why and i'll be like oh of course of course makes so much yeah, sense uh, makes sense to me okay so uh so it, when you're if you're like if you were to give some advice to a new ish big wa player who was sitting down and looking at all these war scrolls all these different enhancements all these possibilities how how would someone decide or what kind of advice could you give to someone who's trying to decide even what kind of army they want to bring in the first place? Like, how do you get over that decision paralysis when you're building a big wall list? Yeah, that's a very good question. It is decently hard. Um, where I would say to at least get over the initial decision par paralysis, play what you want, at least at first. But if we're going, like, straight competitive, you want to play these guys, then... I would look for the things that are most going to benefit from your WA points. What are the things that are going to be the scariest while I'm ramping up and playing this faction that I can fully utilize? So we with the WA points, you get plus one to hit, plus one to wound. That's your last two things. So we're already looking at me melee. You want to be melee focused because that's only in melee for orcs. And unfortunately, so now we look at what are the best things that we can do with melee in the Orc Orc Lands book. And most of Bone Splitters, all their units get plus one hit, plus one to wound on the charge, and nothing else on their war scroll. So unfortunately, you don't look at much of on their side besides taking a Bone Splitters wizard for your requirements for wild points. So they're already out. So that helps out a lot, at least for some of that. Then we look at the entirety of Cruel Boys. All right, what are the things that can actually benefit from that? That's either the monsters or gut rippers. And gut rippers are not that great in melee. You would hit on threes and threes at full wall points with no rend, only one damage. Yeah. So they are not really a consideration. And then you look at the monsters, and that makes it a lot easier on your decision paralysis for what's your heroes, because already you're taking two heroes, which is Bone Splitters and a War Channer. So now you have four other slots for your, her your hero options. And you go, okay, we're mainly looking at Iron Jaws now to affect your plus one to hit, plus one to wound. 
So we probably want more Iron Jaws heroes, so that allows you to narrow your focus there, if that helps and makes sense for you. Yeah, it seems to me like most lists that I see right now for Big Wah are primarily Iron Jaws, right? Because yeah. you're, you're playing Ard Boys, you're playing Pigs, you're playing Brutes, and at that point it's like, well, I, I could throw in a second War Chanter and get lots of value out of that, right? Or I could play a weird knob and that would be really good so i mean so if you're if you're making a list for for cruel Bull or for a big Y, you're probably primarily looking at uh, iron jaws but what what are the cruel boys units that you think like what what are like the best cruel boy units for big Y after gobsprek would you say yeah so some of the best units after that i would say would be hobgratz if you need a, just a very cheap screen, they're a good 80-point screen for that. The next would be if you're bringing, if you really want some shooting, look at Bull Boys. Bull Boys are good. You can, if you have reinforcement points left over, getting a unit of six, or even like two min units of three. And then the last thing would be, not not the last thing, there's a couple other. Uh, you can bring a Swamp Call if you're bringing a lot of Bull Boys. Yeah. But otherwise, you don't have to really spend the points there. But my favorite ones are the uh, Killer Boss on Nash Tooth yeah. and the uh, Corpse Serpent Vulture, besides Gops Rat. Sure. Nash Tooth, insanely good. 110 points for a 3 up save that moves 10 inches. So great. You can give that guy Fasten so you can move 20. If you make him your general, you get access to the Cruel Boys tactic that just do 10 mortals which is easier oh, sorry do 10 wounds and not take 10 wounds which is easier than the other two for a general well and here's the crazy part about that battle tactic is that you can use your big you can use your wargog profit profits death mask ability before you pick your battle tactic so you can just sit there and be like did i do 10 did i do 10 mortal wounds with my wargog yes am i planning on having any other combat where i might take wounds no free battle tactic like, you know it's a free when you pick it, which can be pretty broken, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. That is a very good uh, option to take from Cruel Boys. Nash Tooth, very low investment, and you get a lot out of it. You'll see that one of the eat better grand strats for orcs to take is Wa, where you mm -hmm. just need your general or any of your battle line to be in your opponent's deployment zone at the end of the game. So having... A Nash Tooth or a Corpse of Revolta as your general makes it very easy for you to get that, especially if you put on Fasten on them. So yep. the Volta moves 28 while Nash Tooth moves 20, and they can be easily survivable as a, as a general pick. Oh, for sure. Nash Tooth in particular. That 3-up save is, is nice. I've seen people take him with um, Armlet or Amulet of Destiny, right? The six up ward universal enhancement yes yeah just make him a little uh, bit more survivable yeah for before this ghb i used to bring the break a boss on the on the troll yep and he is one of the most damaging units in the game right next to uh the snatch snatch a boss on sludge breaker he if you actually get a three on his damage and you are at full wild points where he's just hitting on twos and twos he can definitely kill something. He, you can kill a lot of things in the game. Yeah. Before, I would give him Fasten, and I could teleport him, and he would teleport Fasten 5, so he would be 4 inches away just in the hero phase, and then he can not move, charge, and then kill whatever I'd want him to do if your opponent deployed in With any forward. kind of error. Yeah. Yeah. Any kind of gear. Any and, kind of error. And if you're a two drop list and you get to control who goes first, you could also super sneaky and do that same thing. Right? You yep. super sneaky I... and then you fast and and then on the other side of the table you could teleport pigs or something, right? Hoar frosted pigs. And and they could mighty destroyers in, right? Like you can really punish bad deployment with super sneaky and that teleport hundred percent. Yeah, as long as your general's not the one getting super sneaky, perfectly yep. fine. Yep. You don't want to kill your general too early in the game with this army, as it's very important for WoW points, and it's very important for how you conduct yourself throughout the rest of the game. Top three generals, in your opinion, what do you think? 
Top three generals right now, I would say Nash Tooth, Weird Knob Shaman, or mm, you could also put it on a War Channer would be your other one. Actually, sorry, yeah. I, I would say the other one would be a Corpse Ripper Vulture. Yeah, you think so? Lots of it's you know that's another great thing about Big Wa, and I love talking to people about this army because there are so many different opinions, right? Some people swear the only general that you can take is a Maw Crusher. They're like, it's the only one. It's the best one by far. I don't personally agree. I I generally go for a weird knob. And if I if I was playing a Nash Tooth in my list, I would probably consider that as well. But yeah, what do you what do you think about the Maw Crusher general? I do love Maw Crusher. I just love him so much more in Iron Jaws than in Big Wa. Um, like we're already we goes back to my previous point is that we want to see like what can best utilize the plus one to hit plus one to wound ramping and the mock crusher is a very good example of that but unfortunately it really wants to get into the fray and it is a very huge base it's a very huge target everybody who sees a mock crusher knows i'm going to kill that or i need to kill that yeah and that's a very big deterrent for me and like i can bring the mock crusher but that means i have less wounds or less bodies on the table in order to best spread out to have my screen so i can ramp easier into big wa and we can get to that once we're going into uh how do you conduct yourself in the game but when i have less bodies it means less wa points means less i get the right. ability to be be my full army quicker so you would rather and, have like more brutes than a maw crusher I'd rather have more brutes. I'd rather have more art boys. I'd rather have like stabbers, which kind of sounds sacrilegious. Uh, no, I, I get I say, it. I'm, I'm not bringing a maw crusher, but um, when no. I can bring a a uh, mega boss on foot to do essentially the same thing as what I want the maw crusher to do, which yeah. is just to give multiple commands for like 300 less points, I'm probably gonna go the mega boss on foot. Gotcha. Yeah, and I mean, that's definitely a, like a very effective style for Big Wise. Tons of bodies, right? Tons of bodies, tons of wounds, lots of charge bonuses, right? Lots of stuck in combat bonuses, right? You're just racking up those Big Wild points. And yeah, and the other glorious thing about the army is you can, like like you said, there's so many diametrically opposed opinions. You can you can change it however you want and still perform very adequately and very well It comes well down with to it. your play style. Yeah, comes down to playstyle. Yeah. That's a that's a good thing with uh, with the Maw Crushers. Like it doesn't work for me, but it can definitely work for anybody else. Yeah. Like give give it the destroyer, send it on in. It can still win you games flat out. Um, that just requires you to change up like how you're going to send, spend your commands, where things are going, and that's an entirely different thing than how I play the game, and that's beautiful. At my local meta, there's quite a number. I think three or four. Uh, Gargant players and there's yeah. also a couple of Seraphon players who like to play a lot of monsters like Lard, you know so for me the role that the mega boss is going to play is a or and Nurgle oh my lord do I have trouble with Nurgle but <laughs> right but just something that can come in and delete a giant threat on the board right something that can come in and 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 get rid of you know like a like a Bastilladon or something that can get rid of you know, like a un unclean one in one turn, right? Yeah. So it's like it, it comes in, pops destroyer, and deletes whatever that thing was, right? Like if you soften up a gargant a little bit, you know that maw crusher can come in and finish it off. Anyway, that's yeah. that's uh, that's kind of how I'm planning on on playing them anyway. So when you're when you're list building, how important do you think uh, drops are for you? Like how important is it? How much do you value controlling who gets to go first in Big Wa? I do not at all. Right. I, I am a madman when it comes to this. Like, I go double digits or bust. So you're just like, I'm not getting to choose. I feel like like in this game, it's a pretty smart idea to decide to yourself, like, I want to control, and I'm going to do my best to contest who controls, or I'm not going to contest, and I'm just going to, like, plan around my opponent getting to pick and lean into the opposite end, right? Just like, it's like, do you do, you do like a double... Uh, what's it called? Ah, oh, jeez. Why is, I'm blanking on it. Warlord. Uh, yeah, double warlord. Do you double warlord in lots of your lists? 
I do double warlord in a lot of my lists. Um, at least for my play style, I love seeing where my opponent is going to be. So that's where that goes to back to where my play style is. Like when I'm playing this army, I want to have my key pieces, my hammers and anvils, very strategically placed, because you also have to set up like. I have a unit within three of my front unit, so if they charge this one, I'm going to get two wall points, and you're always thinking that. You're playing, like, 3D chess in your head. So when I can see the entirety of my opponent's board outright in front of me, it's great for me. So I can I go high drops, and that, they're done by five, and I go, I still have six more drops. Right. You've, so you've put I down some, 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 like, frontline screens, and that's about it, right? I put down frontline screens or rip a snarl fangs is a great like decoy one where I just throw it off onto the side. It's like it moves twelve. I know it's gonna get there eventually. Um, and I can always place gobsprack in range for unbinds if they care to avoid that. They can deploy for the back. That's fine by me. It means you're not gonna get into me. And big wad doesn't want to be in combat till minimum turn two anyway. So stall, stall, stall. When I can. Yeah, you want to stall at least for the first turn and a half. So that's where we live. When I and it's even better for if they're going to give me the first turn, we got the new cruel boys battle tactic. It's easy. Just put all of your cruel boys within three of any terrain feature, and you've done first battle tactic. And, and you don't it, have to overextend at all because yeah. you just hit any of the points, and now you have your battle tactic done because you're going first. And it sounds like you and me both. I only the only cruel boy I'm playing right now is Gobsprack. Sounds like you're playing Gobsprack and Nash Tooth, right? So Good that, amount of the time. Yes. Yeah. So that that cruel boy battle tactic is easy, right? It's so easy. It's just like oh, it's like yeah, I just move up and here I am done. Yeah, no and if problem. they still if I lose Pryo and they still give it to me on turn two, you just again you don't want to be that. You don't want to be that gung ho like you're, we're not Iron Jaws. We're not looking to table our opponent by turn two. Just be cagey. Throw like your min unit of Ard Boys to, for the Iron Jaws tactic, or then you work on any of the other tactics and core rules. So just if you put 160 points for the middle of the board, if they kill that, who cares? It's only 160 points for their whole army to just get closer to you, and then we'll see if well, how Pryo goes three and four. Would you say it's fair to say that a uh, big wall play style is minimal committed five point turns? Like for turn yes. one, turn two, it's like I'm going to do as little as I can and stay as reserved as possible while still trying to get a five point turn. Yes. So uh, I will, I'll break it into how you want to conduct yourself with the army with that question, with that question that you want to consider yourself i'm not a full army till i hit at least 16 on wild points for my plus one to hit right, yeah uh, so you want to and on average you get d6 plus three wild points if you are playing for that at, on top of the heroic action so on average you get about like six to seven wild points per turn without like anything else so you will be at 14 by turn two if you failed most of your if you failed most of your heroic actions and you haven't done anything else. Yeah. So you want to be cagey until you hit that 16, 20 threshold. So you want to not commit nearly as much till you're about to hit those and then go gung ho with all of your hammers and anvils. Once brutes hit twos and twos, you're destroying the universe. It doesn't, as long as you have violent fury on them, you're killing anything you throw into them they will die except like some obr things um same thing with just even a min unit of pigs hitting on twos violent fury if you're just sending them to die they're still putting out a lot of damage yeah and anything that your opponent goes into is now just a huge threat and it's hard for them to go into so the first two turns even if i fail my second turn battle tactic as long as i am in a safe position or the double for, for either me doubling them or them doubling me. As long as I'm safe, that's how I want to play that army, and I know I'm going to outlast them because of my damage, because of my buffs. Yes, even five Ard Boys with plus one, plus one, Violent Fury, and Hoarfrost are terrifying. Yeah. Like Give they, those they boys Rend really three. are. Yep, if they get even Rend one right like even ren one and all of a sudden their damage just goes up and that ren three like they'll 
like they're so scary. Ard boys with three rend with that plus one plus one and violent fury are are nutty. How how highly do you value Horfrost? How here's a better question. How how do you think what do you think about the uh this GHB's spells in general? Yeah, I say that they are a bonus, but not a build around. It is entirely scary to consider Ard Boys, like a ten man unit of Ard Boys being Ren three when they're gonna be hitting on threes and twos base in the army. And that's that's all well and good. But that's not something you need to need to build around. It's just another thing that, like we said previously, it's just another thing in your toolbox. So you can choose to make Ard Boys even more terrifying than they normally are. But it's not like it's not something you have to bring multiple wizards to just start throwing Blizzard out of out of nowhere. Um, but you can do that if you want. I've seen some lists bring like multiple weird knob shamans, so they're just walking up. And if you have multiple dudes around, you get to cast an extra spell, or uh, he gets to cast his puke. But so they can just be very aggressive, just being in the front, and they're throwing out Blizzard. But it's not it's not at all necessary. Like you don't have to do that at all. But Horfrost glorious choice i always put it on my war gog before he inevitably blows his head up by staring at somebody <laughs> and he'll just put it on hard boys and they're gonna go to town yeah that sounds like a pretty decent plan to me um how about um oh shoot i just had another question i think it slipped my mind okay so uh so we we sort of talked about the season uh we talked about some sort of tips for list building how to wrap your head head around this decision paralysis uh, I mean, we talked a little bit, a little bit about uh, how you, how you feel about, you know, like contesting for who goes first. Um, also, like deployment, I feel in Big Wa is actually pretty straightforward, right? You have your screens in the front. You want to think about thirty inches for Gob's bracket for your other wizards if you want to be an unbind ranger. If you don't, how do you prioritize? Here's two more seasonal questions actually for you. Do you, um, when you get to choose, when you're going second with Locust Focus, are you taking that extra cast or are you taking the command point? Or, and like, how often? And it, what kind of situations do you want each? Yeah. Um, I will typically take the actual CP, honestly. Uh, that just gives me more options that I can, all right, double redeploy with my mega boss on, on foot right. or double all at defense in shooting when I would only double all at defense just in melee. When I would take the double unbind if I will go against somebody who has more casts than I do. I'm sorry, the additional unbind when I have someone who has more casts than I do. Unfortunately, most of my list only has the war gog as the only caster on foot unless I'm taking arcane tome. So... The Wargog is not really doing anything with that extra cast because he's only knowing two spells anyway. Yeah. So I tend to not take the extra cast or unbind as much, whereas taking the CP on somebody who can use the CP on multiple units is much more appealing to me. Right. That Mega Boss is pretty useful for that purpose. I agree 100%. Very useful. Very useful. And how about um, how about the Battalion? The Locust Battalion. How often do you take that? I am looking to experiment more with it now, because um, I like the idea of having enough dice still left over. Even if my opponent takes turn one, I have enough Locusts after I use Gobsprack to unbind them to have enough more dice for pluses for Gobsprack spells, because they're just so detrimental to my opponent when I just say, oh, plus one, minus one attack for most of your army that's within six of this point. Yeah. Or minus one charge. It's, ve it's very enticing to me. That's why I said Gobsbrack's probably my, one of my auto-includes. So I'm looking to fit Locust a bit more. It's just the harder when I'm looking at ah, my my hero options getting a little getting a little cut here because I need to fit a weird knob in here and I can't bring my Cruel Boys General. So I'm, I'm looking to see where my... Uh, where my preferences lie, but I'm stuck between having a Nash Tooth General or a Weird Knob General for the purposes of Taken Locust. Yep, I hear that. Uh, I find personally, I've had a lot of success with going into my games already deciding that all of my Primal Dice are going into Gobsprack. Like, that's like my plan, right? It's like, I'm just going to Counterspell or I'm going to Unbind, right? And if I get to spend some on my offensive spells, like on my turn, 
cool. And if I don't, that's okay. It's not, like you said, it's not a build around. I'm not building around Horfrost. I'm not building around Blizzard. I'm building around Gobsprat getting a 10 up unbind is what I'm doing. That's a glorious feeling. Yeah, it really is. People are, people are afraid of that model. Oh, it feels so good. I'm so happy. Um, oh yeah. One other thing I, w I wanted to mention just real quick for yeah. for deployment, uh, just being aware if you have some of the fast units like Ripper Snarl Fangs or Guard Gruntas, deploying them in such a way that if you are still playing KG enough when after your Cruel Boys battle tactic is done, for just having them buy three terrain, you want them in uh, deployed in such a way that they can you can get the surround and destroy having three units by board edge. Okay. That's a lot of people are, are like running into for problems outside of Big Wa for battle tactics that they are deploying for board edge purposes because not everyone has good, easy book battle tactics. Sure. So if you don't want to be as aggressive to have Iron Jaws in the middle of the board, you have the option of having dudes on the side to just have another relatively quote unquote easy battle tactic that's still safe for your main army right. to still be castled if you you don't want to get in yet because your wild points are still not there. So this has been a uh, recurring theme in my content for players is that like having a plan of, of how you're going to achieve your battle tactics is the most important thing, right? It's like knowing yeah. like, okay, so turn one, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this, turn two, I'm thinking this. So what are your, like, what's your default like five battle tactics if everything is is going according to your plan, like what what do the battle tactics look like for you and your in your army as you move through a game? Question: First one, it's always going to be the hide, the the sneak up on them, which is have your crew boys units within three of a terrain piece. Turn one, that's easy. The brain dead done. Second for turn two, I will start looking at either depends on what army I'm going against. If they have, like, no wizards, you can do magic dominance because you just have... You you have the casters, and it's still possible that you can have them out of unbind range at turn two. You can even do that turn one if you really want. So for turn one, turn two, I'd say those are interchangeable depending on how you deployed and what you, what you were uh, given for purposes of the turn. Yep. Then for looking for three and four even turn five having 30 wall points another free easy brain dead battle tactic for us yeah and here's here's another thing just for uh the audience that you can um you get to roll for your wall points and like tally up your wall points before you pick your battle tactic so you can do that in or or like you can there's like i can't remember exactly how the interaction works but there's like there there's room there in for you to be like, oh, okay, like I started my turn with 28 battle with, with 20, let's say 20, uh, 22 wild points. I started my turn with 22, no 24. Cause I think you need to have 24, um, at the beginning of the turn. And then, yeah, and then you, you can see how you roll. Start. Yeah. So you can start with 24 and then you can roll for your wild points cause you'll get three, right. But then you can roll for, for your wild points. And if you breach that 30, then you pick that battle tactic. Right, like you can see if if you'll get it before you pick it. Yeah, it's a part of the start of the turn uh, yeah. stuff. So you do all your start of hero phase stuff, which getting wild points is at the start of the hero phase, and so is choosing your battle tactic. So you yep. can say, all right, I'm gonna see how much wild points that I have. Yeah. So and if... I go, oh, I'm at 24, or I'm at 30, and I know I'm gonna make a couple charges this turn. Then I'll then I'll choose the big wall battle tactic. Yeah. If you're failing the big wall battle tactic, it's because you made a player error because you did your math wrong, right? Right. Like it or should. You chose to wall for some reason. Yeah. Right. You did something, but it's like if you fail that tactic, it's a mistake on your part. As a player, it's pretty easy to almost guarantee that particular battle tactic. Like turn three, turn four, for sure. Sometimes the math doesn't work out in your favor, right? And you end up with like 23 to 31 over a turn, you know, but say la vie. Sorry, carry on. You were talking uh, what other, your turn three, turn four battle tactics. So around three, two, and four, look, you can look for the Iron Jaws battle tactic of having multiple dudes in the center. That one 
is also relatively easy. A lot of still a lot of these battle plans require us to fight in the middle. So that's something you can always consider if you're ever going to be fighting in the middle. Um, even at that time, if you don't think you're going to have two Iron Jaws specific units in there, you can look to do have a character charge and battle line and still have uh, still have one of them still locked in combat. That's another one. Yep, that's a good one. And then the last one typically is surround and destroy for me. And also intimidate the invaders is also very easy depending on the battle plan. So as long as you have more dudes outside of your territory than in, you're we're constantly walking forward with mighty destroyers. We want to get in combat anyway. These are the main battle tactics I would say you're always considering to do. Seems about right. I like it. Um, then you still have all the other ones that are uh, situational, like your general dies. Like, okay, uh, like I misplayed, but like I can now throw my big squad of brutes or my gore gruntas at the thing that killed it at any other point that they're in a bad position. Yeah, um, that's how my plan, my plan works sort of like that. It's like here are the ones that I think are going to be the easiest to achieve, like one, two, three, four, five. But then here's some situational ones, and if the situational ones happen to come up, take those, right? It's better yeah. to cross one off your list that's situational and save one that's easier for you to get, right, moving forward, for sure. And then I generally go... take the big wall one on that turn, right? The big wall one I take on yeah. that turn because it's, it's a one, it's now or never kind of thing, right? So, Yeah, whenever you're iffy on your battle tactics, if you know that you're not, you're not going to get any of your easy ones. Sorry, if you know you're not going to get any of the uh, situational ones, fall back on your easy one. Yeah, fall back if to you your plan. Yeah. yeah, if you can do some of the hard ones and you know you're going to get it, like the re charge two things, retreat two things, that's also a very easy one, but situational. If you can do that one, go for it. If you know you can do any of your easy ones on a previous turn. On a next turn, sorry. When do you call a wah? For me, very situationally. I don't do it often. I really like having the stacking buffs, and I never want to lose them. Whenever I call a WA, it's when I'm hitting 24 in my turn two. After I made all the charges, everything is like in combat, and I know I'm just about to... I'm just going to rip that cord. That's the only time I've ever called a WA when I was charged by, like, an Alpha Strike army, like, the entirety of a Sylvaneth army was in front of me, or Iron Jaws is right there, some Stormcast things, and I managed to get that many WA points by turn two because of I rolled, like, a five on WA points, and I've gotten both my heroic actions, sorry, all three of my heroic actions for turn one, and then on my turn on turn two. That's when I would WA, but I'm much more reserved for those WA points when I... I've been bitten when I've wad, and then I, all my brutes, all my art boys are back to hitting on their base profile, and then I feel really bad. <laughs> so I try to avoid it. But so basically, if you're being alpha struck and you need that momentum. Yeah. If I, in, even a lot of the times, even on that momentum, if I don't think I'm going to kill their whole army, I don't do it. <laughs> right. So it's like, if I, I'm going to wad this turn only if I feel super confident that after this this combat round that i'm gonna have decimated my opponent exactly right it's a free battle tactic too like when I, if i want to go to zero on wild points that means i also lose out on that battle tactic if i haven't already taken it so i try not to do that at all because points is how you win games yeah for sure that's such a it took me a long time to come to that realization because when you play this game especially when you're new it's like, oh, like, I just love killing my opponent, and I feel like I'm winning when my army is killing their army. But it's like, well, no, you can, like, lose on the table and still win in points. Right? Exactly. Like, that's that's the game. The game is getting those 25 points over five rounds. Right? That's, that's, that, that's what makes... That's what separates the boys from the men. Apologies to my, to my two female listeners. One of, the, <laughs> one of them is my wife, and one of them is my mom. Hi, mom. Just kidding uh okay okay so battle tactics is there any other grand strategy worth considering besides wa like honestly um 
my my buddy Aaron that you had on here, I, I call him Elias. Uh, he likes to stick by the. Uh, it's the one where you have Gosfrak, Gordrak, or Kragnos. Oh Lord. Still alive at the end. Oh, is that the um, whole tactic? To be honest, I'm gonna have to even look it up. Or it's a grand really strategy, much? right? I have Crump, to double. It's like crump it's them all. Them all. Yeah. yeah, you can only pick this grand strat if your army includes Kragnos, Gobsprack, or Gordrak. Okay, so it looks for Big Wa. This one's actually on the table, right? Because Gobsprack, you know, it doesn't have to be your general. You just have to have Gobsprack in your army. Because let's be honest, you're not bringing Gordrak, right? And you're not bringing Kragnos. It like this is Gobsprack, right? Because so, it's a, an, a literal option, because we're bringing Gobsprack, is why this one might be considered right. light. You, you have to table your opponent, essentially. You have, it, they have to have uh, fewer than three enemy units on the battlefield, so they can only have two enemy units. So you're, yeah. you're, you're functionally tabling your opponent. I don't like this one. Me neither. Like, I don't like it at all, but some people like have been grabbing it there's also the one where having no battle line for your opponent that's one of the ghb ones but wa is just so universally good to all me the time. it has so many less points of failure yep like um, all you need is jester general or any battle line and if you bring teleport that's just five unit of hard boys that you put into the corner yep. of the board and your opponent might have to throw 100 plus points at just killing 80 and like if they did that sure yeah who cares it's something i've come up like it, the, the way that i play big law is i always like to look for where my opponent has made a positioning error right where yep. they've like uh, unfolded their castle inappropriately or left something vulnerable off to the side and then they're getting teleport pigged right they're getting teleport brooded they're getting teleport mock rushed they're getting they're i'm gonna put something on their in their back line that they don't want to be there and like we've all we all know this right but there's uh, lots of tricks involved with mighty destroyers and fastin where you can like you know um big wa has like a plus one charge that comes pretty early so if you put a maw crusher or whatever it is nine inches away it's actually an eight inch charge right with that plus one to charge and then they are not going to be able to unleash hell because it's the hero phase right so there's lots of little tricks where you can really punish bad positioning from your opponent and then you might just have a battle line in their back line right like it's you're just sitting there and yep. you're like well if nothing else happens i get my grand strat right so lots there of there might be some other there. of the ghb ones that you could consider consider for grand strat but i just look at wa it's and so i just i kind of glaze over at that point i know that's how i feel too and this other one crumple them all the problem that i see with it just on my first reading and maybe you know like i i I never, ever like to assume that I know better than Aaron, right? Because, like, talking... To Aaron's, like, in the top 10 players ranked worldwide or something silly like that, right? Like, he's, you know, like a veteran, tried and true, right? But when I see this um, crump them all, I think if I was your opponent and it was close and we were going to come to Grand Stretch, I'm just going to run. I'm going to take my units and I'm just going to run away and keep three of them alive, right? Like, you're giving opportunity for your opponent to take actions that will deny your grand strat. And I don't like that as a general principle. With Wa, it's like, well, I'm not going to give you that option. Like you said, I'm going to teleport our boys way into the corner and just wave at you. And and it's like, there's nothing you can do to stop me. Right? But... Yeah. That's what I mainly consider. Yeah, it's Wa. Like, and as I said before, too, like I usually take a weird knob as my general. So on turn yep. five, he just teleports himself. That too. Right. That's turn also what I did previously yeah. before this GHB. It's great. Yeah, he just moves on turn four. You're like, I'm going to run him back out of unbind range after he's done all his things, right? And then on turn five, I'm just going to teleport him into the corner. Also gives me a lot of those scary feelings like, oh, when previously it's like, ah, I, I need my grand strat and all my battle line died. He's my only hope. Well, I have mastery of magic. Let's hope to the gods yeah. I roll that seven. And I still take master of magic because, like I said, I, I dump all my primal dice into gobsprack and so right. a reroll teleport feels really strong with a plus one to cast right because i'm by turn two i'm looking at what a, like a six up with a reroll right so i still i still take master of magic i still think it's really good personally um i don't see a lot of other people taking it it's but. also great for unbinds especially when yep. you're out of uh primals so. yeah yeah it's great like i i'm still a fan like i still i still like because again i'm not uh, like i made a choice i'm like i'm gonna pump all my unbinds into gobsprack all my primal dice into gobsprack so i can just take master magic like that's still okay um anyway it's not about me 
right? So on top of me. Okay, so I think, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about with um, respects to, like, the, the flow of a regular game? Like, we, we talked about how to, the opening, we talked about delaying until you build those wall points, and then suddenly you become this melee powerhouse. And that's generally how you win, right? You win by playing your, your tactics smartly, you know, minimal committing on turn one and two while still trying to get five point turns. And then turn three and four, you're sort of turning, you're turning it around on your opponent. All your buffs start to kick in. You start to like grind them out for position more effectively than your opponent does. You're using your toolbox to try to, you know, like, like kill the things that need to be killed. So, you know, your, your Wurgog is setting up his stare, right? You're, Right, and then and that, I, I guess that's essentially how a, a game flows, right? Like if things are going well, is there anything else you wanted to add to that, to like how a game overall unfolds? Yeah, one last thing that because we're a very, we are a very uh, position position dependent army. Because we get wall points for each unit still locked in combat. There's a good Wo Hammer article about this about positioning several units in such a way. That while you're generating wild points, that if they charge you, you are getting two to three wild points because they're not going to be able to kill like your, your heroes behind. Right. So basically, like how you do screens, do you want to have your heroes behind the screens, but like just barely within three of the front line, so you can get multiple, and you're essentially doing like a wrapped, layered castle, where you have like your art boy screen in front. You'll have the unit of brutes directly behind it, so they could pile in afterwards and still fight over the Ard boys and still get wild points. Or you have a war chanter behind, or your war god prophet. So they're just barely within three, still threatening to stare. But if you get charged, you are also getting more wild points. So it's being having that situational awareness with, for the army is very important for just having those guys within the certain number of inches so you're maximizing your amount of wa points while you're going through the game yep and it's even better now with lookout sir right you want to be within yes, three much anyway. better yeah so even more that's the last thing i would that. say yeah awesome um unless you're playing against pink horrors then you want to leave a little bit more space i lost yeah. a game like that on on turn one it was uh soul screen bridge pink horrors into my castle and then nothing could retreat and that was the end of the game Right, I, I was no, I like my my thousand points in my army were all locked down and incapable of doing anything, so there's a couple exceptions. Um, so yes, agreed. <laughs> agreed. Yeah, we all we only make those mistakes once, though, right? We like to hope so. Yeah, like I've made so. I've made multiple mistakes at the same time, multiple times. <laughs> okay, so did you want to look? At, or if there's nothing else, we can move on to looking at some lists. I think you brought yeah. three lists with you today, right? Yeah, I grabbed three. So okay. that should be good. So up first, we got this. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see them on your end, too. Yeah, I got them. Cool. So here is. So, yeah, take it away. Like, what What do you call this list? What's the What's the deal here? Uh, so this first one, I, I don't, I'm not really that great with names. But this is my, essentially, I would say my casting GHB WA. This is what. This one I would portray more as my casting one when I don't, but I don't have locusts in this, so that's the one change I would make. But uh, I love my brutes. I love all the casting I can get out of this. So again, we go with Wa. We're stuck with War Chander, so I normally always bring two. I like having two options at minimum in my army, whether they're hammer and anvils. Violent Fury just makes everything so good. It does. And having a fixed and war channer and a heat and a charging war channer is just a match made in heaven. I so personally, yeah, yeah. I, sorry, I, I actually find the um, the fix and beat war channer to be often my preferred one on the table. When he's fixing up the Wargog Prophet, it always feels super nice. Always but, feels great. I love my charging one, especially when I do bring brutes because I'm slower. Yes. If I get that three up and at the start of charge phase, brutes running, just charging seventeen feels good. Hundred yeah, percent. So I'll always bring at least one. So my brutes or anything I need that long bomb charge. Like, hey, I, I have plus one to charge. If I'm rolling on an average eleven on three e six, I got a twelve. 
and sometimes a lot of 12 inch charges win you games so that's what that's the policy i live in my head uh, at least for that so the way that i kind of see this list is like this is a heavy body list right like you're, you're playing it's it's like the core of your list is like okay i'm gonna run a double reinforced unit of brutes a reinforced unit of brutes and then a reinforced and non-reinforced unit of hard boys i'm just gonna bring a lot of meat and put it on the table and then to complement this slow moving fighting force i'm gonna have rip a snarl fangs who can like you said be mobile and run off and grab objectives take board edges and so on and i'm gonna also have a kill a boss on nash too for the same for the same purpose gobsprack is obvious and then to support this large body of um infantry units in front of me i'm gonna have a double war channer and a mega boss right to me that oh, just it seems like exactly what's going on here right yeah i have two hammers with the two different sets of brutes just in case if they somehow kill my big one or if they kill my little hammer i have another one that deals damage even then because we're running multiple uh multiple war channers the hard boys can still be a hammer as well but the 10 man unit of hard boys until they get violent fury are just a good anvil so they can be my four up four up screen that's going to sit that's going to get all the defense and they can protect my brutes for them for the counter charge on my next go the mega boss on foot is a glorious trading piece but he's also one of the key things in the army to just constantly go all right double all defense double uh inspiring presence because our bravery is garbage when we're in yep. destruction i know it's dumb so, yeah when well, everybody else can just oh i'm free and i can ignore this mechanic we can't well you read in the book about like you read the lore and stuff about orcs and it's like orcs always fight to the last man and they don't care about losing all they want is a good fight and like they're just having a great time even if they all get slaughtered like they're just out there having fun but it's like, oh no! Actually, no. They they um they're really uh, timid and they run at the first sign of uh, of of problems, right? It's like it doesn't yeah. make sense. Like gits should have low bravery. Orcs should have really high bravery. I would like, at least want something like uh, the boss pull from like 40k, where you have a boss in the unit and he's like, you're not running away, and you smack an orc and then just take some damage for that and you ignore battle shock. That yeah. would be great. They should just be immune. Like, honestly, like, anything with an orc keyboard yeah. should be immune to, to, to bravery checks. They can have a bravery was... score, right? That's fine. But they should just be like, oh, yeah. Like, they just, you don't roll for them. They're all immune. It's like a book rule. It's At it's, minimum, it's give silly. me something like ogres, where I have plus to bravery when I'm in combat. Please. Yeah, well, something. But again, it's like, it, according to the, the lore that GW has yeah. set up or whatever, like, they don't, bravery is not a, a thing for orcs. Like, it's not a, like, if you were in a bunch of orcs, like, bravery isn't even a word that you understand because it's irrelevant. It's, like, not a concept that's in your head. It's, like, why would an orc flee from, from a fight? That's, like, why I exist. I'm here to fight. It's, like, my favorite thing to do. So why would I run away from it? It just makes no sense. It makes me very sad. It does make me very sad. Anyway, I saw well, that, I see that you're taking um, Arcane Tome and Destroyer. So those are your two extra artifacts. For, uh... Yep, those are my two extra artifacts and the two warlord battalions. Um, take this with what you will. This is where me saying like you could bring locusts instead, where you can not take arcane tome, put a weird knob there, and you can take the locust battalion um, instead of the Nash tooth. But I wanted to test out having more casts and having a specific designated Mystic Shield monkey right. is my was my preference especially when a lot of Horde is in the meta because of Soul Blight, I always think I'm going to be casting the second spell with the Wargog Prophet, which is his War Scroll spell of yes. doing mortals to every model in the unit. And that's such a good spell, right? Because it also has a 10-up that you can stack with Primal Dice. Yep, still modified, which and then is it's, yeah. glorious. And then it becomes like what? You roll a die for every model in the unit, and on a 4-up it deals a mortal? Correct. Right, so you're looking at a, a, a unit of 20 or 30 and you're just you're just laughing right yep. it's a good it's a good play right because i think in that instance if you have primal dice to spare it's better than a than a mask stare and that's rare for a wargog to have something to do that's better than a death mask or whatever wargog mask that, that is that is, is rare and i love pressing that button but yeah sometimes you want to be more reserved 
Yep. Or he's been injured, right? You've already stared, you know, so he's got two wounds left and you're like, okay, like I'll, here's plan B, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Arcane Tome on a Nash 2 feels cool too, because, uh, he's your general and I see you took Eagle Maniac, right? Because you're, I guess, and, um, I guess you're passing off wounds to what? Like Ard Boys? Either the five man unit of Ard Boys or if in a pinch, I'll throw it on the Brute Squad. But typically, he's not even close to being in combat until the Brutes are already in combat, and I just need him to either pick something off on the far far side that the Brutes weren't able to get to, or he's charging in just so I can get a bit more wall points in one turn. But mainly, he's there to stay in the back, egomaniac, just in case if he's going to get sniped to throw on something else so I can keep my wall points and keep my ability to run around for my Grand Strat. Um, he can also, in a pinch, just Mystic Shield himself, if he really needs to go on forward, just if I'm about to go to time on my round, so I need to ensure my grand strat, that's another thing to consider, uh, where you have one unit that can move 20 in a turn, survive, and then you're out of time in the round, so you talk, we talk it out, and you say, oh, you're, well, you don't even have to talk it out, just like at the end and you're scoring, you score your grand strat because your dude is in their territory because he moved 20 and he survived. Right. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward um, to me. Last thing would be Rip of Snarl Fangs. He, he, they're replaced for essentially my where I would normally take Bolt Boys in this list at that point to try to clear a screen. They move 12. They do stupid amounts of damage to just a screen. So they can just be there. And I made several charges. They, they killed the screen by themselves. Then the Brutes or Hard Boys that are rebuffed go pile in next. They can threaten any type of hero in the back. They're also good for the battle tactic for surround and destroy of having more dudes on the board edge so they're just a great unit that i like bringing and always considering in a lot of my lists and then the iron jaws fist is just what some stuff you had left over stuff that i left have left over there's also a lot of minus to hit in this meta just like in general because so many armies just now have that right. so even if your wow points are not up to snuff you have another option of all attack that it doesn't count as you issuing it and lastly if you just need plus two to, plus two to hit it's also there when you hit 16 on wild points so you're just still hitting on twos without needing to spend the command point so right. this is something that you can just throw it out and you're also getting this lovely double command point buff from warlord which is really lovely yeah if you're new to the game and you have issues with like oh i ran out of command points just if you don't think you if you don't know if you're how many wa points, uh, sorry, how many command points you're gonna spend in one turn, you just throw that, throw double warlord, or just say, I think I might need a little bit of a push this turn. One more warlord, and you just have that option. Well, uh, command points are very important, so I like bringing warlords. Okay, so here's the second list. So uh, similar uh, in terms of the um, grand strat and the triumph and all that. So let's see. Here you got. You know, Wurgog, Weird Knob, Mega Boss, War Chanter Wars, Chanter Gobsprack. So you have, it looks to me like in this list, you have cut the Nash Tooth and you've replaced him with a Weird Knob General. And then, yeah, looks like you're running Gore Gruntas, which is different from uh, your previous list. Because now, actually, that, that's something I didn't, I didn't notice, but you're not running any Gore Gruntas in your, in your first list. I guess your mobile options, like I said, are your Snarl Fangs and your Nash Tooths, but you, you're not really running any kind of, like, fast, punchy sort of unit. And then in this list, you are. But I still see that you're running a double reinforced unit of Brutes, two reinforced unit of Ard Boys. So you're, you're still bringing some pretty ch uh, chunky frontliners. Um, yeah, yeah what, what can you tell me about this list? So this one, relatively the same as the first one, but just having that option of a really fast really fast like missile that you can throw with the gore gruntas i don't like them as much in big wa because i don't typically run maw crushers so i don't have something that can keep up with them to keep them with all attack all out defense or like violent fury because i'm not blood tooths i can only violent fury them once if i'm sending them off so if i get the double or yeah, if I, if I get the double, I can't buff them again. Yes. So they're not nearly they're, as effective. They're a one-turn trick. Yeah, they're a one-turn trick. 
so I don't keep them as often. So in this list, they basically replace the Rip of Snarl Fangs, but they're still a good missile. If I just go, all right, my Brutes or my Hard Boys are not going in, but I want a good distraction and putting damage in, they're a good early source of WA points where just Violent Fury them, send them off. They're going to go and c complete whatever objective I send them. So that's it's just a different play style you're going for instead of, I have two big blocks of brutes that are slowly going to walk up and destroy you. This is, I have two surgical pieces I have to very consider with my Gorgruntas, and they're just looking for prime targets. So it's just a different way that you can play the army of, I can still be KG while I can still surgically extract the targets that I want to remove with those guys, which allows me to do with the great big green hand of gork i can teleport them outside of 12 then mighty destroyers so they're within three and then they're already violent furied so then they're ready to fight and then the suffering grave tide is an, my other bonus where i can further clear hordes instead of just relying on my two brute squads to do it i have the one brute squad and suffering grave tide to also really put a pe punch into lar large bodies this list is more surgical. Yes. Than the first list, for sure. And then your what did you take? I guess you took destroyer for your um, war or for your uh, <laughs> warlord battalion. Right. Yeah, I took destroyer because it's always still just a beautiful trading piece. If I'm still, if I don't, if I don't think I'm gonna be able to live whatever's gonna go in there, then I can sacrifice the war boss on foot to just kill kill whatever. I throw him into. Yeah. Or if he's just also is just gonna kill a bunch of hordes. Yeah. It, destroyer is just always just too good well, to really not take. Sadly. Combined with that fight on death. Yeah. Right, it's like your opponent's looking at him, and it's like, you know, especially with lookout sir, right? It's like you're like he's gonna get his values worth. Right. Yeah, I can always choose not to attack with him. So, and if he does die, he's still attacking regardless of that destroyer. So I'm never yes. not going to get value. Yes, he's gonna. And for 140 points, like he trades very well, very well. Yeah, I've thrown him in a Scarbrand multiple times. Where, all right, I will just fight over here. You'll kill him. He's gonna kill Scarbrand. Have fun. Yep. And you went with the uh, acolytes too, for this list. Yes, that's where I, I, where I was re referring to previously yeah. with getting rid of the Nash Doof, put in the dude so I can have Locus and I can have multiple unbinds with Gobsbrack. Yeah, for me, that was a big uh, thing with my list, uh, making... Um, I, I, I can't get Double Warlord in my list because of the hero combinations that I'm running. At least I, I'm pretty sure I can't. Um, but yeah, like for me, that was a, that was a, a big consideration because I wanted to run Locusts. Right, I couldn't run Double Warlord and Locusts. Right, that's not possible. It's not possible. Right, so that's why I think I'm actually running this. I'm running Warlord, Locusts, and then everything else is in a battle regiment. Something yeah. I didn't consider when, before I went to my GT the previous weekend, that because if I'm going second, I get that extra CP that I can always put on my Mega Boss on foot. Yeah. So I, I'm not as hard-pressed for double Warlord as I was if I'm going second. Right. And if you're not choosing who gets to go first, which is likely going second is... I mean, I think players mostly are choosing to go second now, in my sort of limited experience. What, what do you think? Are, is, is the value in this uh, GHP to go first or go second, or is it really depending on the list and the book? Very dependent on the list and just the situation on the, on the board, really. Like, typically doubling is a lot more preferable on turn three and four so like if you're going second and then you go first on turn on round three that's the typical when you want to go first because everyone's already in the middle yes um but i think it's more board dependent than the ghb itself as it could have been like in the monster meta or something else but i think more board than not uh anything else about this list or can we move on to the third one yeah we can move on to the third one so this one is, uh, I'd say, more different than the other two for sure. Yeah, so this one is definitely a lot more, uh, a lot more, not necessarily pandering, but more uh, applicable to those who <laughs> want to bring Maw Crusher. Pandering. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, where, I, where I wanted to 
branch out and just show like my interpretation of the mock rusher list which is still very good um but here it's like I, I bring a mock rusher he's at least going in with one unit of pigs so he has some backup with himself i have i'm still bringing the kilobos general as this one's allowing me to bring the i can do the crew boys battle tactic with an alpha striking mega boss or an alpha striking gorgrunta is the reason that he's here and then i still have the double war chanter so i can buff that gorgrunta and the mock russia going in and i still have the brutes that i can even if all else fails with the mock rusher dying and the pigs dying i still have a hammer in the brutes that can still clean up whatever's left over and then you're always bringing the war gog as for obvious reasons but this yeah. is my this is what i assume like a, roughly around most mock rusher lists should relatively look like any thoughts on weird knob uh shaman uh maniac weird knob shaman the mounted uh uh bone splitters model he's the only one that i've also considered as he can run up and i would mainly just use him for a or frost or blizzard monkey yeah as he would he, uh, he can't even fit in the locust one right because he's mounted he can't Correct. go into locust um i uh i can't remember i can't remember anymore um i'd have to look it up i guess i give me give me one sec because like, like uh, sorry but no because i'm trying just to remember let's see uh where, where do i keep he all this is stuff? more useful now than i think he ever will be that he does have access to those spells while being able to be super mobile if you're bringing if you're in the maw crusher realm for big wa and he's good with the battle tactics we mentioned previously i do like to consider him it's just the bone splitter spells don't do anything and I don't, i'm pretty sure his war scroll spell does he even have war scroll spell that he does he does i don't think it's crazy so he can he is a locust uh, okay. nine, nine or less wounds is not unique. So he can be mounted. I knew okay, that was true. So yeah. He would be... He is a consideration. He can have... He can have Blizzard or Horfrost. I would think if you wanted to go a more mobile type of this army, where you have Maw Crusher and him and then more units of pigs, that I could physically see that and if you're going second he can get another spell so you can also like mystic shield pigs and then blizzard if you wanted to you don't necessarily need or frost on pigs unless you want ren three but everything else is pretty yeah, everything else is a little well, extra he, it, it, you're it correct add that much to you're, me. you're correct that he's like a blizzard or a horfrost monkey his War Scroll yeah. spell doesn't do anything, right? Because it targets Bone Splitter units. And he's got a plus one to hit and wound uh, if he charged, right? He's got one of those things. So like you said before, it's like adding plus one and plus... Adding plus one, plus one doesn't do much in Big Wah. And he's not a hammer hero anyway, so it's not like it's like kind of irrelevant. But you're right. He's he's a one spell, one unbind. He's fast, right but he's um like he's a he's like a blizzard monkey and i and i don't really feel like that has a place in big wa i really think the best play in big wa is to throw your primal dice into gobsprack right i think yeah. that's the best play right and if, if you like, could yeah go ahead sorry well the the game when when it's not relevant right the, the game that you're playing when you say to yourself like i'm playing against corn right like i'm playing against corn yeah. they're not casting spells okay i'll just throw my I'll just throw my primal dice into Gobsprack spells or into Horfrost or whatever into the into the um, Wargog, um, his his um, his his busting his uh, horde busting spell right like the plan B is still good right but I I feel like the plan A is is always Gobsprack I feel in big, I think it's so much better than anything else. Yeah, like there could be a world where you're taking like a couple of these guys and you're bringing a Maw Crusher and a bunch of pigs that you're also somehow less amount of drops that you're controlling the turn that you can get a second cast onto him to also like cast mystic shield on top of maybe Horfrost or blizzarding it being very 
aggressive. But I think that's a lot of ifs that I don't want to plan for. Yeah, sure. I get that. How about um, Kilbo? You ever consider Kilbo? You still there? Uh oh. Okay, sorry, I can wait. Okay, we're back. I think. <laughs> what do you think All about right, Kilbo? Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Uh, Kilbo is an interesting, I uh, interesting choice. I think we can take it now, especially since it's such a low investment of eighty points now. Yep. I would want to wait till more of the meta shifts to have a bit more monsters. I still don't like having eighty points that on a two thirds of the time still does nothing. Yeah. Because he only hits on twos and wounds on threes. Ah, it still is something I don't like considering. But when if more monsters come into the meta, like more giants come, like like you said in your meta, maybe yes. having more kill bows is good. Um, but not too many. Like Corn has two monsters where I could think would that bring more of that. OBR always has one. So like there there's definitely a place for it if you could have eighty points. Throw one in. It's and, definitely not bad. And this is where we circle back all the way to Big Wah being a toolbox army where bringing to the table what you need to win against the opponents you plan on facing is super relevant. Right. Right? Yeah, Because like I said, I'm gonna f I am know I'm going to play one Gargant player at least in these five games I'm playing in a week and a half. Right? And so I'm just, I'm like 80 points. And if they, a kill bow does so much damage against those Gargants. Um, another thing I've had a, a lot of success with is a Kilbo and a Swamp Call of Shaman in the list as well. Because the Kilbo suddenly, like you said, it has, I think it's something like 50% where it, it'll just do nothing, right? It'll just do nothing. But if there's a 1 in 3 chance, if you throw the poison on a Kilbo, that it'll, it'll proc its mortals. If your opponents have, if there's a lot of monsters in your meta, that can, that can just slap. I killed um, a Gobsbrack in one game playing a cruel boys player as big wah i shot the kill bow and got my venom encrusted weapons and then he charged me and i unleash hell venom encrusted weapons and killed the, the gobsprack off the table and i thought to myself like wow like that's 180 points and swamp call shaman's great like his the spells are great right he's a locust he was the, the third wizard in the list right so that that means i can lose a wizard and still um roll that die for those um for, for those that extra primal die so Play, play your meta, right? Play your meta. Play, play what people at your store are. Kill the, kill that one player that always beats you, that annoys you, right? Get him. Build yeah. a list to kill that guy, right? Yeah, I, I definitely see it more in like a cruel boys style, more heavy big wall, where you are bringing the swamp call. I wouldn't bring the 180 points just for the one kill bow, but if you have also like, yeah, uh, bolt boys along with it, yeah. Well, that's do it to your heart's yeah. content. There's like a, a list I saw. I thought it was interesting. It was like a Sludge Raker general, right? Because the Sludge Raker is a great model and hits really hard. He took Super Sneaky, Gobsbrack, and then he took the Regiment of Renown, uh, Big Rick's Cruel Shot, right? And that was a... Can we take that? Um, in Big Wah, you can. In Cruel Boys, you can't. Oh, so okay. That's good enough. The thing with... I so, something new. Yeah, in Big Wah, uh, it functionally translates into a 50-point kill bow. But it takes a hero right. slot. Fair enough. Fair right. Enough. So it's like that hero slot is precious. But if you're looking at a list, like I'm looking at, you know, or if you're looking at a list and you have five, five heroes, right, and you're thinking about what else you can do, right, that big Rick's cruel shot is actually not bad. Teleporting a unit of three poisoned bolt boys onto an objective can be kind of a nice, or you can teleport them within 12, right, at 11.9, and then you can still snipe heroes. Right, so yeah. there's like some yeah, wiggle room there. Group. Again, it's like it depends on your play style, it depends on your meta, it depends on like what you're good with, what you practice with, and so on and so on. So, okay, yeah, that's what I have on Big Wall. Yeah, that's great. I think uh, I think that's that's basically everything. I can't think of anything else. Um, I think I, we covered like so much different stuff. We're we're about an hour and a half in. Is there any other like thoughts or any anything that you wanted to touch on that we haven't? Um, keep on the lookout for when we're eventually going to get the Maw Cruncher in. <laughs> I would love to see how, when my big pig gets to come into Big Wah, and we're going to have some good time there. But otherwise, we're in a very good spot in the meta right now. We have good battle tactics that allow us to get the points and get those wins. Really consider Big Wah 
as we are we're, we're definitely not going to be like the s tier broken army no. but we are a solid a tier if you just get some practice in you can go into almost anything i would say right now you have we have the options we have the tools it just requires just that little bit more effort and that's why i'm here and that's why i just want to say it's a glorious army and thank you so much yeah we all appreciate you all right everyone that was greg brewer big thanks again for coming on excellent conversation i feel like hour and a half is a good time for an interview like this we're able to discuss all these really interesting uh topics and questions and and with aos armies in general there's always so much to talk about so many different things to consider so if you have any other questions or, or comments for for greg he'll be around hit him up in the comments join the discord like subscribe wah wow.